So Mastercam is a piece of software that allows you to take a file designed in some other CAD program and allows you to prepare it for machining by creating specific tool paths that the machine will follow. You can also design parts in Mastercam, although most people find it easier to design their parts in some other piece of software like Autodesk Inventor or SolidWorks. And so that's what we're going to do here is I'm going to open a file designed in Autodesk Inventor and then prepare it for machining. So I'll just open up that file by um, grabbing it out of um, my removable um, USB drive that I put here. And um, by default, it's right now set at looking for STP files, which I have three of those files in this directory, but I also have Autodesk Inventor files. You can also open up um, SolidWorks files or Mastercam files, etc. One thing to be aware of, though, if you want to open up a Autodesk Inventor file, you need to have Autodesk Inventor installed on the same computer that you're using Mastercam on. Hence, if you're using Mastercam on a computer that doesn't have Autodesk Inventor files and you're using Inventor as your design software, what you'll need to do is export that Inventor file as an STP file. And then you can open up the STP files um, by just selecting it from this list. So what we're going to look at is this chassis side file. And this is, in fact, just our, the side of um, our chassis from our 2012 robot. And so I'm just going to open this up. Before I open it up, I'm going to click Options. One thing um, that I found in this version of Mastercam, by default, it's not set to import the edges and the curves, and so I need to select that. You can actually change that in options, um, but by default, it's set at just importing the solids only. So I'm going to select there, hit OK, and then open. So now we're looking at just the end of the part here. Notice the view is we're looking at the top view. The WCS is called the is represents the work coordinate system. And we're looking at the top view, which is the XY plane. It turns out that we need to change the orientation of this part such that the long part of the part lies along the x-axis. It's tried it's really hard to see what this part looks at looks like from this view. So if we click here and look at the isometric view, um, it shows it a little bit more. Notice most of it's hidden. To show all of it, you can drag it and scroll by zooming in and to zoom in and zoom out. Or you can just click this fit button and it'll fit the entire part here. Here we're just looking at the wireframe of the part. It's kind of hard to see exactly what it looks like. And so if I go here, I can shade it. And it gives me the solid model. Notice that this is a square piece of tubing. In fact, it is two inches by two inches, um, and it's hollow. It's an eighth inch thick aluminum tubing. And so what we did is we uh, machined this part, and what, that's what we're going to do here is just set it up for machining. Um, and we'll start by orienting the part like it needs to be oriented on the machine. So the first thing that I typically do after viewing where the part is, is I hit the F9 key. The F9 key actually shows the origin, and you can see the origin here. Okay, I can zoom in and zoom out. And this shows the x-axis here, the y-axis here, and then the z-axis here. On the milling machines that we have um, at the shop, the x-axis is the long axis of the mill. Um, and then if you were facing the mill, then you would be um, facing in the y-axis. And then the z-axis is up and down. And so if you're facing the mill, towards your right would be the positive y direction. That would be this direction here. Um, away from you would be the positive y direction. And then up vertically would be the positive z-direction. This is a right-hand coordinate system. 